Good evening. The Concord Township Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for December 11th, 2019 is now in session. I would like to introduce the board. To my far left is Skip Sweeney and Jim Rowe. I'm Yvonne Valentic. To my right is Chris Gerald and Todd Golding. And to our far right is Heather Freeman, our zoning inspector. Under the advice of council, we ask that everyone please stand and be sworn in tonight. Please raise your right hand. Um, do you swear that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God, and so say I do. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, this evening, when presenting or speaking to any case, um, I can you come forward to the microphone and, and be sure to uh, state your name, your address, and then you've been sworn in for the record. Heather, were the legal notices published in a timely manner? Yes, they were. Okay, we have one old business and one uh, uh, old business item appeal and one new business uh, item appeal tonight. Three vote majorities required to either approve or deny the appeal. The request is denied. You have the right to file an appeal. All right. So first is old business appeal number 2018-41. Mr. Randy Viviani of uh, 7757 Concord LLC um, is requested that we postpone his hearing once again this month. So that will stay on the docket. Correct. Yeah. Okay. it will be back in January. All right. Then on to new business, we have um, variance number 2019-55, Mr. George Davis of Probit Holmes. It's requesting a variance on behalf of the property owners Carl and Patricia Wollner from section 17.04D or B and 17.07A to allow for civil disturbing activities related to the construction of a single family dwelling with a zero uh, feet preparing setback from the category two wetland in lieu of the 30 feet required for the property located at 10165 Caribou Trail. Mr. Davis, please come forward and present the case. I have uh, Larry Handler here, who's a developer for the community as well. Um, name, so, your name, your address, and confirm uh, that you both have been sworn in. Larry Handler, 3659 Green Road, Beach Road, Ohio. I've been sworn in. George Davis, 7962 Butler Hill Drive, Concord, Ohio, and I've been sworn in. Okay, great. Okay. So to, to give you a little bit of background, first our client's not here, they're they're in California, so um, they're moving here to be new residents. Um, but uh, so uh, the client was interested in the lot and uh, the lot was in a subdivision, it had a block of wetlands on the lot. That block of wetlands had no right area. Right. We explained that to our clients that, hey, you know, there's this area you can't go in. And in our initial site plan, we were grading outside of what the wetlands were. Right. Um, we were issued a zoning permit. Once we got the zoning permit, we instructed our client, hey, there doesn't seem to be any disagreement because, you know, there's been some disagreement as to whether there should be riparians or not based on the water course or not. So I instructed the client, hey, let's make sure we get the zoning permit and then you can go ahead and close. So the zoning permit was issued based on what, what the wetland was identified on the, on the subdivision plat, and we instructed our client to close. So they then bought the lot off the land. Then a few days later, the zoning permit was revoked, and, uh, uh, and that started sort of a back and forth of a few months, which uh, the ultimate result was is, is that the wetland was redefined being much larger and then we still feel strongly that even though the wetland is larger, by your, by your ordinance, it should not have a riparian on it. Um, however, it was told to us that you know, basically it needs to have the riparian. So we drew it up with the riparian and there was going to be a, a, a small, what we thought would be a small retaining wall. The client was okay with this. They had already bought the lot. They're moving here. They sold their house in California. And we started construction. And uh, if you guys haven't been out there, I brought some pictures. But the, the issue we have is, is, is that um, with with the larger wetland and this riparian, um, and I brought a couple pictures that I can share with you guys. Um, it's it's and I, there, there was one of the tradesmen's cars happened to be there, and there I mean you can't even hardly pull into that driveway, right? So like. Uh, uh, we haven't installed the retaining wall yet. We got estimates for the retaining wall. It's somewhere between twenty-three and thirty-some thousand dollars 
to do a right painting wall, and then you would have a approximately eight foot wall right off the edge of the driveway. And you know, if someone were to hit the gas or set of the brake, they could actually flip the car over on top of themselves. So what what we are asking for is for the Board of Zoning Appeals to sort of agree with us that there is no riparian on that wetland. We're not disputing the new shape of the wetland, but just to say that, hey, there shouldn't be a riparian on that. Because the way that the code is written is that uh, a riparian is extended off the wetland when it's within a water course. The letters from HCW say that the, that the bank ceases to exist as it enters the wetland. So there's no defined bank, which is the definition of a water course within the wetland. So thus, there should not be a riparian on it. So that's why we're asking for a, a, a zero riparian. I'm not asking for a variance. I'm trying to say that I don't think there should be a riparian. Rather than argue that, just say that we'd like to be able to do that. And if you look at our revised site plan, we can then have a nice three to one grade coming off of that driveway so that you know the client doesn't have to spend twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars on a retaining wall and have a virtual cliff at the edge of their really small turnaround. So um, that's sort of where we're at. And you know, there's a lot of techno technical uh, stuff that I'm sure Chad and, and Heather can probably better explain than me regarding that. But uh, so I'm, all I'm asking is that we be fair to the client here. You know, we, we you know, there was there was never an intention on our part to damage any wetland through a unfortunate course of events. The wetland changed from what everyone thought it was. And and now this riparian is just making it, you know, I think a safety hazard but also a pretty big financial hardship to try to install. But, but the variance again is for the variance is for not interpretation of our code, correct? The variance is technically for a zero, you know, setback in that area. So I just want I just want you to be yes. clear what we're supposed to be. Yes. Well, so it, it depends. So like you know like it's a gray area, right? I mean like uh, I, I mean you're you're the one that's interpreted it that there should there should be a right on that. Okay, so so if, if we're if we're going Heather's interpreting that there should be a right pairing. So then yes, I guess we are asking to grade the entire right pairing in that only in that area where we have it on the plan. But, but I would just say out of you know common sense here, right? You know, like out of common sense we're 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 asking for you know what what might be a, a just a normal bank off the side of someone's driveway and and it's, it's a gray area, I, I feel, as to whether or not there should be a riparian on that. The wetland, as it was defined before, there would not have been a riparian. And then the new wetland, there was this whole back and forth as to whether there should be one. Because the water course does not go through the wetland. Well, uh, there's a couple of questions. I mean, you, you're a home builder, you're a developer. Yeah. You both know that those wetlands change over time. You've done enough projects. That you know the wetland that was delineated whenever that was done is going to change over time. I mean, out of your, that's not anything that you might have done. That's just nature, and that's what happens with wetlands. Those boundaries grow. You know, we have seasonal weather. One year that wetland, if you delineate it, might be bigger than the, than the following year. So, I mean, I, in all due respect, I think you kind of figured that that old delineation probably still wasn't valid at this point. Actually, no. As a builder, we always feel that what's on what's what's on the development plan is what the weapon is. We do. I don't, I don't yeah. really agree. Okay, that's your approach. I think you guys know better than me. But so we're here to talk about you give providing you access to grade within the right period. So I Yeah, in the area of like if you look at, I, I guess, yeah. It's not the wetland, it's just we're not going into the wetland at all. Or even the newer wetland. Like, yeah, we're just asking you guys. I think you have the plan, right, where we're uh, grading right up to the wetland. But yeah, in that one area, not in the entire area, just in the area where the driveway is. Mm -hmm. Can we just do a record clarify? This is the revised grading. Yeah, it was done on November twenty second, two thousand nineteen. That's yeah. the plan. That so make sure I'm looking at Rex. Yeah, what, that, no, the date it's is. stamped with the. It's got the blue stamp with the November twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Because we have multiple copies to make sure we get the right copy. Yeah. Yeah. So 
we're asking to grade uh, up to the wetland in this one little area here. So that this could be, you know, so just like a hill instead of a cliff. But a reading chance letter, my understanding is that a wetland delineation wasn't done. You guys did a the pair. pair. So that, that might not be the actual limit of the wetland. So I think that was the concern that soil and water raised was that if that is not the limit of the wetland, say it's, say it's two feet, then you, that, and you grade two right up to the wetland, then you're disturbing an existing wetland. That's, a, that's not us. That's a federal issue at that point. But that's not the actual limit of the wetland. That's how I interpret well, it. Well, you so, so, it, so that you never, said, a, a wetland delineation yeah. wasn't done and it wasn't yeah. firm. So what's shown on there, we'll call it an approximate wetland limit. So no one knows if that's the actual limit. And you guys are grading right up to it. I think that's the other concern is that if the wetland is greater than that, you will be impacting that existing so, so if we were to do a delineation on that, would the board be willing to do a zero, a zero, a, a grading up to the wetland? Um, we would do that. I think that's something we can discuss. I don't think that we need to talk about that. If that's something you want to propose. Well, what I want to do is just have a client that doesn't have a cliff off the side of their driveway. You know, I mean, it, it's an unfortunate. I mean, I, I always ask everybody to put yourself in the client's shoes. You're coming from another state, right? They look at a lot. We have a plan that says what the wetland is. We show them that. We say, hey, this is an area you can't go into. Right? And, and, and at that point, I thought maybe Heather was going to argue we had a very, we had to have a riparian on that. And I said, so don't close until we make sure that Heather's not going to want a riparian on this, that it's an isolated wetland. And, and so we, we get that zone permit, and then we tell our client to close. They spend $100,000. <laughs> and, then, and then we have to go back to them and say, hey, wait a second. Now, now that's not where the wetland is. Now we got to try to figure out where the wetland actually is. And then we did. And then we were trying to say, hey, OK, the wetland's bigger, but there still should be no riparian. Everybody else is saying there should be. And then so we tell the client, hey, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, what do we do? We've sold our house. We've closed on this lot. Let's try to do it, right? And so we came up with a new plan where we were going to do this retaining wall. But now that the client's seen it, you know, they were here for the electrical walkthrough, and they're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to even pull in this driveway? And I'm like, yeah, I know. And, and this wall's going to be eight feet tall, you know? And so, you know, that's why we're asking for reasonableness to say, hey, you know, this is an unfortunate situation. We don't want to go into the wetland, but we just want to be able to, to grade close, to, you know, like, I mean, as close to it as possible so that they have a, a walkable, mowable area instead of a cliff off the side of their driveway. And like right now, we would only be able to have a 23 foot deep side load concrete. And when we build side load garages, we do 28 feet. So, like, I mean, right now, even if we did the retaining wall, they would not be able to turn into their driveway. They would have to go back and forth to get straight, you know, to turn in. So that's why. You know, these, these, these riparians can become troublesome when it's on a lot that was created before the riparians existed. I mean, that's, that's the issue. We want the riparian, and George had a site plan, and that was only for this. No riparian. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's a riparian. And the buyer bought the lot based on not having a riparian. He's spending $600,000 or $700,000 for a house and lot. And now then the rules are changed. Heather, can you explain what happened? I'd love to know. Great. So um, an application was submitted to the Concord Township Zoning Department for a permit in July. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. In July, on July 11, 2019, the site plan showed a wetland and a line through the wetland that was not labeled as anything. So in, in our zoning, the text does require that if there are repairing areas, that it's up to the applicant to provide that on the site plan. It's not identified in the site plan. So unfortunately, it was missed. 
Um, then subsequently we spoke with Chad Soil and Water who brought it to our attention that there was a, a repairing issue on the lot. So um, we had to tell, tell ProBuilt that we're going to have to, you know, you need additional information on the plan, so at the time we're going to have to revoke this permit so you can get us the additional information on the site plan so we can confirm whether or not it's going to be the, the setback. And it wasn't on the site plan because you had an old map or something? So the the best thing for me is to show you where our original, and this is going to get confusing because there's a bunch of different site plans. They have it. They have the denied permit. Okay, so they the denied permit, yeah. if you look at the shape of the wetland, it's, it's behind the house. The wetland is back here behind the house. Right. Which one? Is this on your Which one is this? The one that says denied permit? permit? The one that says denied. So this is this is where the wetland was defined, you know, on the subdivision. There there is we don't we I don't I mean these are grade lines here. We have the grade lines, this is the wetland without a right there, right? And we were gonna grade along it, you know, so the customer had a, a a hill instead oh, right. of right, and then and then what happened then is once once we went through this whole process, then the wetland became the wetland. The shape of the wetland changed from from this in the side backyard to. To, to this, right, where it's all of the, the, between, well, the wetland is here, and then the riparian now is like a third of the lot, right? And yeah. so that's right up to the so edge of the driveway. So, you know, you know, we, we have to get a, make this narrower and put a retaining wall. Yeah. Which, so that, that's what happened. I, and that's what um, went into zoning for approval, is that site plan? No, this one went into zoning for approval, because on the plan. plat, on the plat, this is how the wetland so what, what when the stream yeah, I'm sorry. I can't see what you're pointing at. Um, I, I understand what the wetlands were before. What is it after? What is it after is, well, the wetland shape is this, right? But then you add this riparian on it, which makes it much, much larger. So the riparian of a... So let's forget, forget the riparian. Yeah. Um, oh. So you, so you have been, so this plan has a, a wall, a retaining wall. It, it doesn't have grade, it doesn't have the, the, the yeah, actual grade. This is, yeah, this is, honoring the riparian, there's no way to grade it because it's basically, I mean, it's really close to the house, it's only 12 feet, and the driveway's right there, so the only thing you could do is well, well, I'm trying to figure out, what did your plans call for before you realized that the wetland changed and there was a, a riparian? Yeah, it was just grading off the driveway. So there was no stream shown on the original plat. There, so, right? so, so there's a, and Chad, you're better off at this. I don't know if it would be defined as a stream or a ditch or whatever, but there was a, there's a water course, right, that comes underneath the road. And then a water course, as you guys defined it, is something that has a defined bank. So that defined bank dissipates on this lot. It does not continue to the park. Again, I can't, I'm yeah. sorry, but I just can't see where, can you point out on my, what were you going to do before you found this all out? Okay, is before this, found this, no, this is what we were Well, then where, why is, because this is the old wetland. This is our permit, this is our zoning permit that right. was originally granted. was denied, granted. right? No, it was originally granted, then revoked. Okay, so this is what, so this was your understanding from your due diligence of the wetland. You knew that wetland was there? Yes. Okay. Um, and the stream thing is up here and it dissipates somewhere around here. It ceases to become a right. water thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, okay. Then we go to this one, which is the, the one that Tether issued the second zone, right. Right, which is where now it's all of the, the wetland is right here. It goes okay, from how, this shape to this shape. All right, where is, so where is this shape within this shape? So, well, this is much bigger. This is all the way, this, this is like right here, right? So this is all wetland, and then the riparian goes all the way. 
I understand. Right. Right. Yeah. This is what they yeah, the wetland throws the riparian up into the whole mess. Yeah. Well, the argument is, again, the words, and it doesn't matter, but the argument is whether or not there's a riparian, should be a riparian on it or not. The way your ordinance is written, riparians are off of wetlands that are within a water course. So what is the definition of within a water course? The water course ceases to exist as it enters the wetlands. So but the, the water course doesn't exist there because the Morley Road's a dam. So there's a water course as it goes into that wetland, in that pond, then there's a water course after. And the reason there isn't a water course is because it's in line for your definition of a water course isn't shown because it's in line with the pond already. I think that's part of the issue. So well your de it's paint concourse definition. Of water and this course. is what you want to do, right? Yeah what we want to do is get similar to be sort of similar to what we had initially. We're not impacting the wetland, but we're going well, we don't know this. for I guess we're not we don't know for yeah, I gotta ask a lot of questions. Yeah. In, in general, the hardship is it's a, so when you tell your client, I mean, you're a builder, as Yvonne mentioned, um, and you guys know that there's riparian setbacks. Yeah. And so you assume, oh, this is a wetland, I'm not even going to consider riparian setback. The, the stream, the wetland as defined on the plat, was not. The stream did not go into that wetland. So per your ordinance, there would be no right parent. So we can't touch the wetland, but we can go up to it. So that's what if we If I'm a builder, yeah. I'm not, if I'm a builder, I look at this thing and I say, there's a wetland here. You get, get, there's a repairing setback on top of it, too. No, because that's not what your ordinance says. Your ordinance says what? there's a repairing on a water course. Maybe, can you just, yeah. all right, I, I just assume that it would be on any sort of water influence Land. But, yeah. but we're not debating that. Yeah. It sounds like I'm just asking a question. question. Yeah. That's all. Did, did our riparian map change? The riparian stuff that guide changed. map is, is a guide it map. It's well. purely a guide map. Um, on site field investigation is Trump's. You know, so, so. so I just want to understand so the, the first map, when um, it, the permit was approved, it did not, or it did show a um, stream. It shows a stream and a wetland that are together. That are together? Or are, not together. are not together. No, right. not and so not. when was it determined that? You're looking at the denied permit. There, there is a line that goes through the wetland that's not labeled. So it, it's really not clear what that line is. That's a great That is not a great Exactly. So uh, Barrington did not label that line. If you look at the line now, they're labeling it as a watercourse. Well, we label it as a watercourse here. Yeah. All right. So your assumption is that you had the wetland as you originally learned of it, without any sort of repairing it because you didn't think it applied, correct? And then you're going to build with those parameters. With, with the parameters, yeah, that were on the plan. Okay, so with the parameters that you're assuming, were you going to use a retaining wall or a graded? We were going to need it to. You were going to grade, grade it? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. But then when did the wall come into play? That's where I'm looking at. When did, you, when did the, the site plan that we had with the wall, when did that? When did that come into play? Was that when was that submitted or that was never submitted? That was so so and 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 I, and. You know, I have staff. I don't. I don't do permitting. So I mean, if I get out of line here, Chad, you make you can correct me if I get the chain of events wrong. But basically, we submitted that first site plan with the what we thought was the wetland to Heather. Zoning permit was granted. Then a few days later, it was uh, rescinded. Okay. Stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why was it rescinded? What precipitated? Because of the Their revocation. Wanting, arguing about whether it's a right parent or not. Who right. is who's arguing? Well, what, please explain yeah. what transpired. Well, maybe this would be an opportunity for Chad to yes. testify. I think. Well, no, please I, join us. Yeah. Tax straight before we get the expert. Well, no, yeah. it was yeah. because you know then a soil and erosion erosion control plan was submitted to Lake County Storm or soil and water where it became apparent that there was. Um, right, but I want to know what kind of commitment they made. Yeah, that, that's where I was going to go. So. You get the zonings approved, then you find out a few days later that it, it was rescinded. 
Like, I don't know. Well, I don't know exactly what it is. Like a week later. Yeah. A week later or so. A week it later. wasn't a few days. A week later. Okay. You know, I, but I really exactly it was precipitated by Chad's. Chad's review. Yeah, because after we get the zoning permit, then we go to stormwater, soil and water, and the. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Again, you're the developer, but would it the homeowner who is signing the deal? still be able to get out of their contract with you because it's still it still had a lot of levels of I would have assumed they had a way to get out of there or not. You have contingencies but they thought that they were beyond the contingency so they closed the deal. Is that correct? Right. We got the zoning. Well so. but you didn't get all the other approvals. You just Okay. This is this is what I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you submitted the thing that you thought was appropriate. Okay. At that point did you Call your owner and say, we just submitted it, it got approved, close your deal today. I said, you can go ahead and close. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> between, between the time that you said you can go ahead and close and the time that it closed, did you learn anything new? No. All right. No. That's, and then that's, after that, that's, then, what, that's the problem. Then after that, then they say, hey, you can't. Because, I mean, I let's mean, be I mean, honest. Heather, is that true? If you guys have that's not the problem here. No. Well, no. Well, it, it, is, it, a it, it is a problem. It, it is a problem. The problem is that they're violating ordinances, right? They're requesting for the uh, variance from the regulation. Right. That's why you're But they could still meet the variance, but just build them the wall. Correct. But well, the they wall get a presents a hardship. Correct. Which, the cost. No, no that's the cost. I think it's about safety, too, well, because it's, right, I mean, it's got to be eight feet tall. That's sketchy. Mm -hmm. It's still tough to get in and out of that garage with the wall. Did you guys look at yeah, did, did you guys look at an alternative where it was a four foot wall and then grading down but didn't get so, into the wall? So if you, if you, if we're looking for a compromise, yes. Okay, so I had my guy create this, which is you know it's not ideal for the client because it's still steep, but it's not nearly as bad. So if you guys want to look at this one, this is where we're like 13 feet off. We're, we're, we're not fully encroaching. It's not ideal, but the client can live with it. Um, so instead of the car flipping over, it just goes on its just side. Goes on its side. Uh, it, it's just going to be real difficult to mow, you know, and stuff. But, it, you know, a car would roll down. Do you have any more? Yeah, I got yeah. 90 copies of it. Well, maybe check. Oh, yeah. So Heather, we're gonna just put this into into the to, um, to the meeting today. We just uh, Mr. Davis uh, submitted a an revised drawing dated October twenty first, twenty nineteen. Complete set drawings that shows revised grading and approach to. So there's no wall in this version here. Um, no, we can make this work without a wall. It's just the, where the lines are real close together, where we're encroaching, that's going to have to be like super steep. It's going to be real steep. It won't be mowable, but you know they'll put some sort of ground cover there to retain. Like, at least that way, then the rest of it we can grade out. And, are, they, are they okay with this, Your Honor? Yeah, they're okay with I this. Feel bad they're, I feel I feel horrible too. I mean, and they would have been here tonight. It's just they got a file away from California. <laughs> So yeah, if, if, if we're looking for a compromise, this would satisfy that as well. Uh, we're coaching a maximum of 13 feet, but only in a little spot. Should we hear from Chad? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we're ready for Chad. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep, thank you. Chad Edgar, my address is 125 East Erie Street, Kingsville, and I have been sworn in. Uh, you've had my written comments, but uh, I know that I'm not the strongest writer, so I'm going to try and summarize what I, I've got there along with some other information. Um, the first of which is the original delineation done for the subdivision. 2001 expired in 2006. If you look at the map, you'll see the wetland in question from HCW with a stream flowing into the wetland. 
The field sheet for data point three in that wetland says that there is drainage patterns existing within the wetland. Drainage patterns defined as erosional features like a defined bed bank. So the time that wetland delineation was done in 2001, I, I believe, it, you know, I, they're not here, the answer, but there was a stream inside that well. Um, and, and the pond was much bigger because I went back and looked in Google Earth. Yeah. Look, between 2012 and 14, something changed in it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit. The next is a pair prepared by HCW for ProBuild that shows a stream flowing into the wetland, stopping at the boundary of the wetland, but meeting the boundary of the wetland. Pair is not the same as a delineation. This is the 2017 ortho photo, 2016 two foot contours, and the 2000 hydrology map. The stream stopped short of the pond because of that change in water levels. That shows the defined channel through the wetland area, shows a change in vegetation indicative of wetlands, shows a stream. The next is the original application, which you've seen. It shows a stream flowing through the wetland that was done in 2001. The next is Barrington's map from their compliant site plan, but again, it's the same as the pair. Shows a stream flowing Where's into... Where's the stream here, Jim? Oh, it is the pink one? Okay. All the way through. And then in the variance request, another map provided by Barrington that shows a stream flowing into the wetland. So six maps, all showing the stream flowing into the wetland or through the wetland. In addition, in July, myself and another staff member conducted a site visit, observed the fine bed and bank above the wetland and below the wetland. Not necessarily in the wetland, but above and below. Um, the township's zoning resolution does not talk about stream and wetland com complexes. It does not talk about a stream flowing through a wetland. It does not talk about a stream flowing around the wetland. Your zoning language talks about riparian setbacks on a stream, setbacks on a stream that capture the boundary of a wetland. When that occurs, whether the stream flows through it or not, flows around it, stops, whatever, stops short of it. If it captures the boundary of the wetland, the appropriate wetland setback is applied. So, when I got the site plan showing a stream through a wetland without the required setback information shown on it, I contacted Wes. Wes is an engineering tech at Barrington. Wes, please put the zoning setbacks on there for code so that we can evaluate if your plan is in compliance. Well, what are they? You'll have to do an ORAM to figure that out. That was when I contacted Heather. Heather realized that the applicant did not put that information on their site plan. She revoked their plan. Then we get this series of letters back and forth from HCW. The wetland flows into it, and the stream flows into it, dissipates. And then the next one was it flows up to it, then it dissipates. So it flows towards it, and then dissipates. So all these different iterations. But at no time has HCW or Barrington or ProBill ever provided any information to the township or to us that states the setback does not capture the boundary of the wetland. So what we have now is a pair, not quite to the level of detail as a delineation, showing a boundary of a wetland. They're using that. They're requesting to grade up to that. I believe you brought it up. This, this was discussed in a, in a meeting right here at this desk back in August, September, early September. And um, we said, you know, we'd like you to do a delineation and show where these waters of the US are so we can stake it in the field and see where it is. If you do that, we'll accept that, and if we're wrong, we're wrong. They did not want to wait. They wanted to do a pair. It was a concession on our end if we were going to accept that. A, a pair is not in your text. A delineation is. But I felt that it was appropriate at the time because that 30-foot setback that would be applied gives you a margin of safety if the pair is incorrect. Now, if the pair is going to be used and there is no margin of safety and you're grading right up to it, then you're at risk of putting fill in a wetland. Just today, I received the JD, which is the Corps' approval of a wetland delineation from HZW for a site in Concord Township that was substantially different than a pair. So this isn't just 
we just want to do it. There's precedent. It's important that we do this process. And had we not gone through this, if you look at the initial site plan that was supplied, and you look at the new boundary from the pair, there would have been fill placed in this weapon in violation of federal law. Probably by accident. I don't think George or Barrington or their homeowners were doing anything nefarious, but it would have occurred. So this, this process is in place for a reason, and we go through these steps for a reason. Um, second thing I'd like to talk about, a couple things in that letter that George wrote that I think need to be addressed. Um, in that letter, it kind of opens with a fact that, or a statement that the uh, wetland work boundaries and overhead categories were established in 2017. If that's the case, why wasn't that information put on that initial site plan? Why are we getting a site plan with 2001 information that expired in 2006? And then we're getting ORAM information from 2019. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, later in the, the letter, it goes on to state that the boundaries were accepted by zoning and later denied after soil and water claimed a water course was present. Well, the boundaries weren't put on the map. The, the riparian setback boundaries were not put on the map for the requirements of your own zoning code. They're supposed to give that to you, and it was not. Plus, it was older information that they put on there with the, the old boundaries of the weapon. So, this isn't a matter of you know somebody not knowing what they're supposed to be doing, other than the information wasn't put on that it was supposed to be. Okay, and it was caught through the process that we had in place with, with checks, um, and it wasn't denied because I stated there was a water course. It was denied because they showed on their site plan a stream through a wetland, and I asked them to put that appropriate setback on there. Um, it says that HCW stated the contrary. I don't believe that's the case. They've never stated that a stream does not exist on the property. They're, again, talking about a water course that may or may not enter the wetland, but that's not how your code reads. The code reads whether the setback captures the wetland. Um, Later it says they were required to get a pair. You know, we talked about the requirement that was their choice to get a pair. Not a requirement. And then lastly, you know, it talks about the quote for that work. The pair was done on the ninth, submitted to us two days later, and then that quote that they included, or estimate I think, that they included in the variance application was just a few days after that. Not weeks later that they couldn't wait, in just a few days, I think you could wait on that information to make sure that your application is complete and you have a budget. I couldn't imagine building my house and telling my builder, oh yeah, just put something on the site plan and I'll figure out if I got the money for it later. It doesn't work that way. Why would you go forward with a plan submitted to multiple agencies if you're not certain you have the budget to build it? And then start it under construction now as we speak, well, you might have to change that site plan due to new engineering or, or get delays for new funding to, to cover a wall if this goes through. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, the, the dam issue. Um, so when that subdivision was first developed, the dam was under the jurisdiction of ODNR as a class three dam, their um, division of dam safety. The earthen embankment and the outlet structure did not meet their code, needed substantial work done on it. So rather than upgrading the dam to meet the current requirements, they lowered the water level, which in effect removed it from the jurisdiction of ODNR. Um, trustees had written letters. Um, we've got some information, preliminary information, our old files that I dug up that the trustees back in 2007 were very interested in, in making sure that that dam was taken care of because all the stormwater from this subdivision goes through that, that dam. So there's precedent of interest in that dam, the amount of water that's going into that dam, which is why you have riparian setbacks. So you're not taxing your infrastructure any further. Um, so it's, it's very poignant in this case that you know, we're talking about right next to this setback, we've got a dam that's got known issues. And you know, what we're talking about here is lessening your own riparian setbacks, which were put in place to prevent additional water from impacting those. So, you know, in my opinion, you've, you've got a conforming plan. It's under construction. It's, you know, I don't know why that, uh, that there's any discussion on whether or not setbacks should or shouldn't be in place because I think we're well, we all in agreement that they, uh, that they are you know, valid in this case. So the stream was or was not on the plan, original plan submitted? Yes. It was on it there. Was. But there were no setbacks. There were no setbacks. Okay. And so we approved 
a permit without the setbacks that should have been there, right? It was a lapse of six days when it was caught. Yeah, it was a month later. And it's the responsibility of the engineer and the consulting firm to put the setbacks on there. And then, did you have a chance to look at this new plan that was just provided tonight? Uh, briefly. Briefly. Well, if you're, you're going to entertain encroachment in that setback area, I would encourage you to get an affirmed delineation before you made any decision. That way you know what the boundary is. Because, yeah, because as George pointed, it looks like there's one pinch point that gets 13, it's about 13 feet away. The rest of it's, I don't know, some dimension further, it gets almost back up to 30. Um, but yeah, there's no way to know if that's still within the level. You know, again, HGW provided us a pair for another property in Concord Township a few months back. We asked for a JD, we got the JD, and it was substantially different. Some weapons were missing, some were larger, some were smaller. So it, it occurs more frequently than you would think that, that there's a difference between an affirmed delineation and a pair. And you get a pair just because it's faster? Uh, they requested a pair because it was faster. Yeah. And how long does a delineation take? Well, that's up to whatever consultant they find in their schedule and then get it affirmed by the court. I mean, we've already been multiple so. months yeah, at this point. So a delineation could have us done Similar to multiple months. Been been done. Done. You're not in the field season right now to do delineations. They don't like to do them right now because they're not as accurate. So the court kind of gives them heart feeling about it. That's so. yeah, the thing that I'm not even going to do now. Right. Chad, are you saying a delineation or a jurisdictional determination? Those so, are two different things. The delineation affirms, or excuse me, the JD affirms the delineation. So anybody can go out and do a delineation if they've had the training. The core ultimately has the say of whether or not that delineation is accurate. Yes, that's the affirmed part. Of it. That is the affirmed part. Of it. Correct. But that's different. There, there's three levels. A pair is the preliminary. Then you go to a delineation, which I believe it uh, talks about delineation, not JD. Right. JB is the third one. So you would be asking us for a delineation, not a JB. I don't believe the pair is any regulatory thing. I believe that's just a, a no, I'm service just, that I'm just consultants saying, offer. Yeah, you're, but what you're saying you would want from us is a delineation, not a JB. Well, I'm giving technical advice to the BZA that if they're going to allow grading up to the boundary, that if you're allowing that, you want to be sure that what you're approving is in compliance with everybody's rules that a JD is really the only way to do that. But if we go with the, the modified one where we're 13 feet off? Well, I guess that's up to them to enough. decide what level of comfort yeah. they have. Oh, yes. Any questions for <laughs> Chad? Not for Chad, but OK. So you're, rec you're recommending that, we, that a JD be obtained? I recommend that if you're going to entertain encroachment into your setback, that the boundary of that wetland be known with certainty, which would be a JD, which is a delineation occurs first, and then their consultant sends that delineation to the Army Corps of Engineers and say, is this accurate enough for your standards? And they say yes or no. And if they say yes, then you use that boundary. They can <coughs> change that boundary, shrink it, increase it. Because that will, yeah, that could change again once the Corps looks at it. But, but I'm not, you guys have granted variances before without doing JVs. You guys have granted them with pairs and delineations. I don't know she if that's a fact or not. I want to talk about this pond thing. Okay. The level of, of the pond right now is at its lowest, and that was artificially created in order to comply with the federal regulations. So we're going back long before I did any of this stuff, so I'm reading back through files, trying to piece together the information. But um, there are different levels of classifications of dams based on the risk of failure and what would occur if that dam failed. Okay? And ODNR has different regulations for what they require based on those classifications. So this one was 
the most dangerous because of the proximity of the homes in the shadow of the dam. So if it failed, there would be catastrophic loss of homes and sure. the uh, you know. So they said, you have to do X, Y, Z. And I, I still have yet to find that document in the file, but ODNR said, you have to do X, Y, Z to fix this. And rather than fixing that, because it's very costly to, to do that, there was no reason to keep the dam or keep the, the, uh, the pond as big as it was. They didn't need it. So they lowered the level of the dam, which then decreases the risk because you have less water that could potentially right. go downstream and took it out of their jurisdiction of class three. Well, I, mean, I, I really don't care why they did it. Uh, the point is that I just wanted to know because it, in terms of the lifespan of this pond, how is, what's going to happen? Do we know what's going to happen in 10, 20 years from now uh, in terms of runoff? Further building, creating more runoff. Um, somehow, the, the pond retaining more water and encroaching even further. What what's going to happen? Because right now we're at a low point, right? Um, I guess I'd have to look at the outlet structure to determine how it functions to know exactly how that water level is controlling the outlet structure. But to answer your question, that would require quite a bit of a hydraulic analysis by an engineer. Okay. Well, th these areas change. Over, they change on a day-to-day, year-to-day, year-to-year basis. These wetlands, the, 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 the water level of ponds, they all change, don't they? From year um, to year? Well, the water level of the pond is relatively static. You get a rainfall, it might expand in size by a little bit, but then that outlet structure, this elevation of that outlet structure will then control the elevation of the, the surface water of the pond. So that really doesn't change that much. Okay, so then the owner is not going to wake up one day after a 100-year rain and that driveway is going to be almost no. starting to be underwater. No, I wouldn't. No, I would imagine that the lowest elevation of the emergency spillway is substantially below okay. that pond. All right. So what, got what, that going. what would happen if, let's say, we just they, they they graded it off. They didn't put a wall, and just out of pure ignorance, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do it. What would happen to the wetlands if they did that right there? They graded into the wetlands. Yeah. Um, and somebody caught them. No, no, no. Just what, what, would the water, would the water, and some economy, that's different. Um, would the water, like, would the water go around it? Would it? How would it affect it? So wetlands are like natural stormwater infrastructure. Okay, so they accept water and release it at a slower rate, just like the basins that we try and build for stormwater capacity. Right. So if you are grading into those areas, you're reducing that wetland's ability to do that. So then runoff generated by this parcel bypasses that wetland or, or you know, so it's got a finite capacity to right. soak up x amount of water now it's x minus some percentage based on the amount of fill it's put in and it, you know obviously we're not you know, we're not talking about destroying the whole wetland if they were at, you know, maybe they would we're talking hypothetical but for minor things you know maybe you don't see much of a change but it's this the reason you've got these setbacks in place is to stop this incremental cuts to the your, your right. infrastructure, which is causing Mr. Crasco so many headaches, replacing culverts and bucking out ditches and basins and everything else. So is this a babbling brook, crit, or is it dry until it rains? I mean, is it a swale? Uh, the stream that enters this pond is intermittent. So it'll flow for good portions of the year. Once you get into late summer, it's probably pretty dry. So you start getting some fall rains, and then it'll probably flow for a while, flow through winter, spring, during the wet season, and then come summer, dries up again. So category two wetland, can you kind of walk us through what that means versus different category? Okay, so the Ohio EPA has a methodology called the Ohio Rapid Assessment Method that categorizes wetlands into one of three categories. Category three, category two, category one. Um, just for quick reference, your zoning code does not require any setbacks on category one, 30 feet on category two, and I believe it's 50 feet on a category three. Basically, they look at the wetlands function and its natural features and they rank it subjectively based on its size, how much of a buffer it has from other things, how many invasive species are in there, how much stormwater is there, how many rare and endangered species there might be in the wetland, and they come up with a numerical score that ranks it into one of those three categories. Did you see the overrim? Was this a solid two, or was this They a did, yeah. They All right, so you've got, got a category that has no setback. 
No, number one has no setback. Number one has no setback. This is category two. Two, I understand. Third. You have a category, yeah. named number one, that has no setback. You do, right? Yes. The township. The township does. Oh, we do. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, but it applies to you, too, in your evaluations. No, we don't We don't apply setbacks. We just review. When we get a site plan in, we review to make sure that everybody is in compliance with everybody's rules okay. before so we approve it. That's why I was asking. And our setbacks are more or less arbitrary. That's what I call them arbitrary. Well, what? Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't use that word. Um, the category one is a lower quality wetland, so their location and the plot and and the time of year. And so a lot of different things. not time of year, um, but your your setbacks are increased based on the quality and function of the wetland. So higher functioning wetlands get larger setbacks because we realize that encroachments into those setbacks can impact. All right, it's not the necessarily wetland. because of the water flow or. Amount of water. Flow. It's the quality of the it's, it's a quality. That is of one of the okay. functions of the O RAM is how much water is in the weapon, but it is not the other. I got you. Alright, now I'm now I'm Okay. In case you got anything else for Chad? I I, I just wanna um I, I wanna talk about again what could possibly happen if if they did grade into the wetland. Let's just say they did this 13 feet thing here. Do you think, what, I mean, hypothetically, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but do you think the water is going to um, affect the neighbor? I mean, what's really the ultimate outcome that we're trying to avoid? I think part of it is that they can't, they federally, right, that you, you can you just walk us again quickly through that, that so there's federal requirements that we can that they cannot create into the wetland unless they mitigate or do other uh, procedures. I mean that's part of this issue. Yeah, it's just not the right one. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Um, Ms. Gerald, your, your question, you said 13 feet into the wetland, or do you mean 13 feet into the setback? From the into the setback. setback. So setback. when you have the compromise yes. plan now and you're asking what, what mm -hmm. would be the impact if you oh, allow them to come 13 right. feet into the wetland setback? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> There really is no way to answer that question. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be our answer. Yes. Because you don't know that it's exact. I was just the asking. The delineation and the procedures. Well, I, I mean, I know there's no crystal ball, but I just wondered what your thoughts were. Thank you. Really, really no way to answer that question. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Just address the yeah. yeah, we're still we're still okay. a little history on, on the pond slash. What's your name again? Larry Larry Madler. And you are the property developer. The development company. We bought the property from Victory College in 2001. At the time we bought it, that was a dam. Unbeknownst to us, they had gotten letters dating back 30 years from OBNR regarding maintenance. Morley Road is the actual dam. Yeah. And they had gotten letters that go back 30 years about maintenance on the dam. We finally took it over and decided, after dealing with uh, our engineer and other people that was going to cost us, uh, probably $150,000 to upgrade that. And then it would have been a constant maintenance issue for the homeowners association, which they couldn't afford to do. So we spent about $100,000 and did what had to be done, clean up the bank, pull trees, get stumps out, put an overflow, overflow in, lower, the, lower the, the, the dam to the level it is now, um, and then it became a, a much less of a maintenance issue. That, but then the water from that pond is partially water that, that flows down from other developments in, uh, in, uh, in Congo. It's my understanding, and I have to go back with my notes, it's the county's responsibility for the major maintenance like dredging. It's the homeowners association's responsibility for the day-to-day -day maintenance like cleaning out the overflow and that. But this is, a, again, it goes back to Lake College, which 
we were a big supporter of them, so we didn't go back to that. We just took it by ourselves to do it, do it right, and that's where we are now. Okay. When, 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 was, when did building begin on this house? On this house? When did it uh, I don't know the exact date. Sometime in September or October, probably. Okay. Any uh, questions for Mr. Davis as well? Chad, could you come in? Sure. Please? Dam there. What's the purpose of that? Yeah. Well, probably wanted uh, uh, maybe it was for irrig irrigating their pastures or watering their horses or recreation. I, I really don't know why the dam is in there. So if they removed it, then the riparian goes way down, right? No. no. This does not affect the riparian setback. The dam that wetland has no bearing on each other. Um, in terms of the setback, no. Um, I would think that if the dam went away, theoretically you could lower the water table in the vicinity, and then you might not have the hydrology to support a wetland in there, and eventually that wetland might go away. But that's supposition that that's a you know, groundwater wetland, because there's different types of wetlands. Um, and I don't know what, what type of wetland that is, so it's just a guess. Um, and I believe that that pond serves as a stormwater basin for Mountainside. Is that correct? Mount, mountainside and up, so up toward Pinecrest. And so it couldn't go away. It had to be maintained in some function. You know, it could be modified in terms of a dry <laughs> basin, I suppose. But that hole back there will remain at some point. Okay, thank you. Here you go, Chad. Uh, any other questions for anyone else? Mm. Mr. Many? Davis, do you do you know why? Can you come up, Mr. Davis? Please. Do you know why the setbacks weren't put on the original map? Um, so, no, honestly, no. But, but I believe it's because when, okay, so now we're going to get into the whole kind of riparian thing. So when these riparians were first put on, right, no, nobody asked for any building community input, right? I, but, I, but, but, you so, when, what, but so, so what happened is, is we went and we had HCW, because I'm building in there, right? You know, and, you know, we, I don't want to lie to our clients, right? So we had HCW look at all the wetlands that were in Mountainside and the streams and all that stuff and say, hey, where do we have riparians? Where do we not have riparians, right? And that's how we came up with, like we were in here before where we got those riparians on that stream on, on Burgundy. Yeah. And, and then like lot 103, 104 has some wetland on it that has a riparian. And, and this one was not, did not have a riparian because the stream lost its defined bank. The water, I shouldn't say water course, ditch, stream, whatever. The water course lost its defined bank. So if, there, if the defined bank doesn't go in, doesn't, well, I should use Chad's language correctly. If the, if the, the, if the riparian around the defined bank of the stream does not touch the wetland, then the wetland doesn't have a riparian. So that's why we didn't have a riparian. Um, but the stream was on the map. Chad, on the map, Chad shows the stream shown on the stream is it's not, it's not labeled. But it was a labeled stream. I don't know what that line is. When Barrington, um, uh, I don't know, what does that line mean? Is it a stream or is it a grade line? I don't even know. No, it runs directly down the middle of the V shaped contours, which anybody that knows how to interpret contour lines knows that that's a drainage way, stream, water course. Well, drainage way, so but not necessarily the water course. A drainage way, but not necessarily the water course. Because the water course has to have defined banks that it didn't have defined banks. You were in here, but I remember the, the burgundy variants. Mm -hmm. That that range then was another one. Or at least the one that we were that we that we heard. Is that and there and that stream, and I, I believe we granted a variance on that. Correct. And is that, that stream on Burgundy, and I don't I don't know where the streets run, but 
Is this stream downstream from this that? Is that same? Right. It's the same ditch. Stream, almost non-existent whatever. stream. But it's a well, stream. No. Right. Well, it's it's a it's a, it has defined banks up on Burgundy. It, it loses the defined yeah, bank kind of, once it comes lost. south of yeah. Caribou. No, right. I, I, okay. But it's the same stream yeah, that we've been in. The, the, right. Except the one, the one that was on Caribou, yeah. is a different little thing that goes into that same pond. Okay. But, but we've got is on all yeah. those. All right. So well, I think maybe the mistake was I was maybe asking, and if I could apologize, maybe asking for the whole thirty feet has got this on a bad way and, and if I could amend it to just ask for the compromise, which where we're only we're only approaching thirteen feet in a little bit of the area. You know, my, my client's okay with that. Maybe maybe if we just ask for that instead of the whole thirty feet that eliminates some of this pressure. Yeah. And my client's okay with that. You know, we modeled that in three D form so they could see how steep it was and they were okay. We're, and we're only encroaching at one at one point are we thir thir 13 feet. Most of it's much less than that. Do you want to amend your I'd like to oh. I could. Go for it. I'd like to amend my uh, application for a variance to uh, ask for an encroachment of 13.05 feet into the wetland. At its widest point? At its widest point. And then, are you going to amend to include the delineation in just dirt on the end of JD, or no? Well, I would ask for a delineation, not a JD. Um, I mean, I think it, the delineation is what would be normal. But yeah, we could provide that delineation so that if it changes, we don't, we still don't encroach more than 13 feet. That would be okay. And Chad. It's not up to Chad. Oh. It's up to us. <laughs> Chad's, Chad's recommendation was that he get a JD, so that's up for us to decide. Well, I think his recommendation went to a JD if we were encroaching all the way, because we might be in the wetland. I mean, if we're not encroaching all the way, is it still necessary? That's what I'm just asking. Okay. Okay. You guys have any other, any other questions? I'm going to yeah, keep, yeah. I'm gonna keep okay. the public comment period open for a while, but is there anyone else here speaking for or against this appeal that'd like to come up? Come on up. Thank you, Dirk.
more serenity, more wildlife, why we chose mountainside farms, and we chose the lot we did because we have the wetlands and we have them on both sides of us. And there is a lot of nature and there. there's a lot of wildlife. Um, I just don't want to see that get completely disturbed, you know, disturbed by it. Because we do enjoy that. That's a plus for us where we live and part of why we decided to move there. You know it's not relevant, but that's our, our take well, on it. Thank you. Yeah. I have just one question. Two questions. Uh, when did you move in and did you fall off your Harley? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we moved in and uh, we moved in four and a half years ago, 2015. Okay. We built our home here. Um, and I did not fall off a Harley. I had surgery. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we're good. You're but thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's here speaking for or against the bill I'd like to come up? All right, I'm going to keep uh, the public uh, portion of our meeting open still, and I'll close that later in case we do want to talk to anybody okay, else. Because sure. that seems to happen with this group. <laughs> so I will entertain a motion to approve rates number 2019 55. Second. Second. Okay. Um, discussion for the board? Who wants to start? I'll go for it. I learned more than I thought I would. It was a little difficult to see in. Chad's an advisor or you know, whatever, and a very good one, but uh, to not get this thing nailed. Exactly, I mean, we're accepting something that you know. We don't have you. That's a final that to be an issue. I mean, we've lived in the you know, township and the water and the water. Yeah, you've been through it. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think it's a that's one view that. I just think this is a reasonable compromise uh, involving a very difficult situation uh, with, uh, with competing interests that um, that are uh, <clears throat> that I can see the points of both. I'm just going to it. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I guess that one of the problems that I really have with all this is that the, um, the setbacks weren't put on the original plan. And that, that went to the township for approval without the setbacks, and they were given a permit. And we're always telling folks, you know, do your homework before you sign. On, um, on your deed, and they did do their homework. They closed on their deal, and now we've got a situation. And I think well, that- But they, they kind of did, and they kind of didn't, didn't do their homework, because they, they could have asked Heather, hey, we had this stream, we had this wetland, and everyone kind of seemed, everyone had, it's gray, it's definitely gray, because we hear, we hear a couple different kind of determinations of what that was, and that, that was never brought up. But it was incumbent on the township, no offense, Heather, really, no offense, but there, it was incumbent on the township, we had just instituted those riparian setbacks a year before, they should have been on the plat. That should have been flag number one. Should have seen that. But and the permit was approved. But we have, that's why we have the checks and soil and water also reviews, and that's when it was caught. Six days later, we're not talking about a month later, or two months later, or they, the, the house is getting built and the pad's in, and then we're finding it. That's, to me, is a little bit different story. Sure. Sort of, not trying to, I'm just well, devil's advocate kind of talking it through as we're. No, I, under, I understand what you're saying. So that's um, where this whole thing's kind of great. That's right. What I'm struggling. So, but, but I, that's why, it's, it's a problem. It's, yeah. it's an issue. 
And so then you've got these folks that spent a, a great deal of money on this land and um, they want to come in and build a home and everything has changed and I think that, it, that this is a good compromise. I agree with Skip completely that this is a good compromise um, given what has transpired um, up to this point, that 13 feet is a good compromise. I think a delineation should be required, not a JD, because I also think that that is a compromise. Um, being in real estate, I know what the Army Corps does to real estate deals, and I think that we're really um, leaving these folks with a severe hardship if they go and they get this JD, and then all of a sudden, you know, everything is worthless. Um, I just think that given what we know, given our setbacks, given a, a nominal 13 feet and having them do the delineation to kind of cross our T's and dot our I's, um, I think that that's the compromise that we need to be making here because there were mistakes along the way on everybody's side. And I don't think that we should be, you know, putting the hammer down on these people and asking for a JD and Jim, you said, you know, we're never going to know for sure. It, we, we could ask for a JD on every one of these cases. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Todd, uh, anything you want to add? Yeah, again, I want to be just is someone who, when you buy a home at this time, just tell me what I need to do. I'm totally ignorant of this. You guys are the experts. And it just seemed like the, when it was first, it should have been on there. The experts should have put it on there. However, you know, we should have caught it too. And the people that are left holding the bag are the folks <coughs> that are trying to move into our township here. Right. And they're, they, they, they went to the builder and on good faith and said, can you build us a house, can we do it here? He hears back and says, yeah, I, we're cool, we can do it. Um, and then, you know, we got to put the brakes on, but, you know, at that point, you know, it's six days. So the house, you know, we, we could have stopped building or I don't, I don't know how, how long it takes to, to, to break ground after we get the approval of the permit, but you know, it's six days, and then we're still building here while this is in the middle, if I'm understanding this right. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. So, but to, you know, I'm looking at the picture of this minivan parked in front of this garage, and this garage is useless um, mm -hmm. the way it stands right here. I don't know how you get a car in this garage, so I'm just going to whack that, that, that third garage door wall there, but, um, but you know, the compromise is, it seems that we're allowed to, and it fits, um, you know, 13 feet. I'm worried about the neighbors. Um, you know, I obviously would, I don't want to see water going to their house because my question was, you know, if we graded it out, would it scooch water towards the neighbor's house and about that? Um, we, don't, we don't know, but yeah, we don't know. But when you're, you're filling it, so what, remember, Wetland does, I think Chad said, it's a place where water sits. And gets absorbed. You're absorbed. Right. right now, you see your what you fill, we're eliminating that opportunity. Do we know definitively well, how much 13 feet into the setback no, is going to yeah. affect? No, we, we, we do not. We can't make that determination. No. But you know, this is a small amount of square footage compared to what was proposed, I think. So um, I, I feel better about this compromise here. And you know, the end thing is the, the new occupants here that they're, they're, they're waiting on us to, to make this decision here. And I think that's probably. So the board wants to put, agree to the compromise, which is a 13.05 foot setback. Not if the board doesn't agree, but you're going to vote. We're going to vote. Yeah. So the, what, <laughs> the, amended, the amended version, which is a 13.05 foot encroachment. encroachment, and a delineation done by. With the condition of a delineation. Done by a professional wetland scientist. Mm -hmm. In the area to, but not a just a uh, JD. Done. That's that's my opinion. And that's George a just compromise. to confirm. That's what you that, that's what you had put forward as well. Yes, yeah, so we're we we're, we're, we would love to do that. Okay. okay. Mr. Chairman, can I just add a question? Please? Sure. So if the delineation is done and this wetland location changes. Which you could, yes. So then they're still only allowed to approach whatever that new setback is by 13.05 feet. Correct, yeah. Our maximum encroachment would have to be 13.05.